welcome to Modern Anarchy, the podcast featuring real conversations with conscious objectors to the status quo. I'm your host, Nicole. Hello, hello. On today's episode, we have disability activist Robin Beatty join us for a conversation about navigating being a mom and becoming disabled. Together, we talk about internet dating pioneers, husbands, and defying no. Y'all, it was so fun to get to talk to Robin and to learn about the different cultural implications of understanding disability and her journey to becoming disabled. There is so much strength and resilience in her story and so much to learn from her experience that I think all of y'all listeners are really going to enjoy this conversation and all the different ways that we talk about the intersection of disability. As Robin says, she is comfortable talking about the uncomfortable, and I think it's time we all dive into that uncomfortable and explore a little bit more. So y'all, I really hope you enjoy today's episode with Robin. Also, cheers to the first day of June and the beginning of Pride Month. I'm so excited to celebrate. And with this new month, the Modern Anarchy Patreon family will be supporting a different mutual aid. And with the recent news, I thought that it could be very beneficial for us to support the Texas elementary school shooting victims. Uh, there are no words to describe the horrible, horrible and horrendous atrocity that occurred in Texas. So I figured let's be loud with our resources, let's be loud with our voice and support the survivors and families of this shooting. So thank you to everyone who is supporting the Modern Anarchy Patreon and the movement towards compassion and radical acceptance of the diversity of the human experience. Uh, together, we are very powerful to use our voice and to use our resources. So I really appreciate all of you that continue to support this work and support the larger movement that is this podcast. And with that, I am sending you all much love. Please take care of yourself, and I hope y'all enjoy this episode. Tune in. Yeah. Okay. I've established a niche for myself, and I do disability and sexuality, sexual health, reproductive health in education. Oh, yeah. So I do speaking, writing, independent research on all the intersections of disability and sexuality, and that has run the gamut of everything from race and disability and gender and how you receive healthcare. Mm -hmm. But I also, oh, good Lord. I also talk about sex toys and design and adaptable, you yeah. know, adaptive uses for sex toys, you know. Sure. And then I talk, I just, I do lots of talking yeah. about disability. I, you know, my talks have run the gamut of everything from talking, but not just disability. You know, I also talk, you know, about sexuality in general, I have, my child is trans. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that that's something that, you know, there's not a lot of information yep. for other parents, mm -hmm. um, for other people, you know, in talking about very, you know, things, you know, that we, you're, we're having to realize and consider, and especially talking about sexual health. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm always finding stuff that, see the other that we don't talk about oh and I like talk I, li I like to say I'm very comfortable talking about the uncomfortable mm -hmm. so, so but whenever I'm talking about something that's meant to get something useful out of it sure you know and I'm I don't know I'm a nerd so I <laughs> love same research mm -hmm. i can research the hell out of something yes. i will find documents going all the way back to like 18 1700 <laughs> whatever yes i 
when I was try, I did a, a presentation on the history of disability and mm -hmm. sex work. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool getting to go yes. back all the way to ancient Egypt and finding, wow. you know, stuff and then finding, you know, displays of disability and hieroglyphics. Really? Like they even had not only like, cause they had, first of all, um, like the ancient Egyptians actually revered little people mm -hmm. and saw them as as divine mm -hmm. like like and so like they would even get tattoos of base really? base is um he was a dwarf god and he's the god of like fertility and uh sexuality you know childbirth whatever and mm -hmm. so they've sh showed that some temple priestesses musicians had gotten tattoos of base on the inner side oh. of their thigh they've said you know there is speculation but they say also um sex workers would get that tattoo to help ward off venereal disease mm. or, or, or nobody says that robin stds sure, sure. <laughs> STDs, i follow, I follow. STI, I, i'm like where the hell nobody <laughs> said veneer that's like 70 yeah, language like, that's nobody, a different time <laughs> Yeah, that's like, like, where did that come from? I, I, and, you know, I, I sit there and I read a lot. I read a lot of things from the past. Like I said, that history of sex work took me to some very interesting places. Mm. But, um, yeah, but we're not talking about that. We're, I guess we're talking about... <laughs> we, we can talk about anything. Like, I keep this platform open. This is part of the anarchy. Exactly when you said you like talking about uncomfortable things, that that's your specialty. Yeah. I'm like, that's a specialty of the podcast. We can talk about whatever the heck is on your heart that you're like, yeah, this is what I want to tell people about. Like, that's how I like to keep the space. So if it's that, okay. that's what it is. You know, but that's just like one of the things that, you know, that I talked about that. Yeah. I did the research, like during the pandemic. I said, okay, yeah, I'll do a presentation on disability and sex work. And then I started thinking, okay, so what did that mean? And I just started doing Google search and then I just went deeper and deeper and deeper. And yes, uh -huh. I discovered the internet archives and <laughs> how you can find all sorts of information, but also where I could get access to articles and things that I couldn't get because I don't have academic clearance I'm not part of a, like a larger institution sure so um because I'm like going I'm not gonna pay $50 to read an article yeah exactly and I'm like hell you don't you didn't get paid to write this article <laughs> but, it's a, but that is the nature of like academic articles they ask you to do all of this writing and all of this work because I'm in the middle of trying to write one but they want you to write like basically like 10,000 words basically you know mm. but you don't get paid yeah. for that um you can say yes I was published in this journal okay but you don't get you don't get compensation for that and that takes a lot of time yeah it does and, for sure yeah and it's and, and it's one thing I guess if you're you know you're employed by an institution you know a hospital or sure. a, the, and and you know that's kind of part of you know, right. what you do, right. publish or perish, you know, in academia. Mm -hmm. But when you are outside, if you're an independent researcher or whatever, you know, that, yeah. th that, that has been an, that's been interesting for me. Mm -hmm. But I, the thing is though, but I do, I want to, I want to know, and I want to talk and I want to find out these things. However, these days though, um, even though I like, I love, love talking about uh disability sexuality got my education mm -hmm. and that I have a my degree is in anthropology sure and, and my back I have a lot of background in doing uh self and systems advocacy within the developmental disability you know professional field but I'm now uh doing a transition I'm transitioning my career I would like to do more work in accessible and inclusive design mm. in the tech industry mm -hmm. Tech is also another interest of mine. Like I'm interested in like sex. I'm interested in tech. I'm interested in this. Yes, and I like writing. Tech. I want to yeah. do that. Yeah. And it's like, Robin, you can't be everything. And I'm like, why? Why, why can't not? I be? Why not? So I like seeing how people live mm. and I enjoy studying people, but I like to see how 
you know, they do processes and, mm -hmm. you know, and how does culture impact how they perform, you know, duties or, you know, what they buy mm -hmm. or, you know, and how gender and how culture, how all of these yeah. things impact, you know, their decisions. Right. And I, I was like, I, I, I'm also nosy, so, <laughs> you know, and like, so I'm like going, I want to find sure. out stuff. So yeah. everything I can find out, I look at, yeah. but there's a whole wide world full. I, I see like the possibilities and I'm inspired by the globe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know there's so many different pieces and so many different lives. It's really, truly, when you think about it, crazy. Yeah. Of different cultures, different pieces that craft like significantly different experiences of what it means to be human. It's, it's pretty wide. It really does. A key part of what I do is, you know, when talking about like disability and sexuality, disability you know mm -hmm. is a natural part of the human condition it's just right. you know and sexuality is also part of being human so yes. therefore it's a global issue it is a global concern i like to see what people in other countries are doing when it comes to access or addressing um, access and accessibility, mm -hmm. uh, but particularly cultural attitudes towards yeah. disability and sexuality and how they've addressed things like for relationships and things. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, for instance, um, that I find fascinating is in America and um, in a couple of other uh, countries too, but you know, there's like basically a marriage penalty that you will lose. Like if you were receiving um, like social security in, and uh, like say Medicare, if you get married, you know, that's all counted as like household income. And so you can lose your health care. So you have basically, you're preventing a lot of people with disabilities from being able to enter into formal marriages. Otherwise you'll lose, you'll lose your health care Wow. and you'll lose, you know, you'll lose your benefits, your stipends or, you know, whatever, like maybe housing, all kinds of stuff, like, huh. you know, like vouchers for, you know, getting housing, you yeah. know, all those kind of things. So, and it's called a marriage penalty and, you know, it's a movement to say, Hey, you know, we need to repeal this. Yeah. This is discriminatory. Wow. Um, whereas there are some States in India Mm -hmm. where you get a bonus, you get money for marrying a person with a disability. Wow. So you can see in like some of their dating websites and things like that, you'll have people like, I'm looking for, you know, someone that, you know, like a woman with a disability I'd like to meet. I was, wow. I was like, uh -huh, you want some of that money. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's, and then they had like enough two people with disabilities marry, you know, then, you know, then it's like even more money. Mm -hmm. And, and I was just like, this is fascinating, but I like yeah. the different ways that, you know, because so it's not the same everywhere. And that is where, that's why I look around the world and get mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is something that is working here, or this is something that, hmm, there's something that we would find problematic about, you know, this practice because of this, mm -hmm. but based on their beliefs, this is why they do this. I know that in some cultures, countries, disability is seen as a punishment, mm. uh, you know, uh, like being disabled, like that you've been punished by God, you know, or you're, or you are, or the evil spirits. And that is, mm. yeah. So that, that was, I had a, a friend that was visiting um, here from the Congo and she was like, and she's works in disability. One of the barriers that she has to talk to um, with people is talking with them and it's like, no, your child is not possessed by evil spirits. They have cerebral God. palsy, you know, you know, oh that sort of thing. So that's just a, um, but that's, you know, that's a cultural thing that's been taught. 
but you know but that's been like the attitude and history that you know cultures around the world have had so Mm -hmm. it's not just in the Congo you know but whereas the only culture that I've seen like in the past where the ancient Egyptians actually they respected Mm -hmm. disability to the point to they had things written you know like in their ethical and moral tracks sure. about how it is immoral and it's bad to uh, basically discriminate against disabled people or try to take advantage of the mm. all kinds of things as they saw the um, as this was part of the divine sure and yeah. this you know and that's been the only cu- culture that mm. i saw in the past that you had like this dignity and respectful mm-hmm. attitude you know, attitude yeah. towards disability. And I, I found that very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, the <laughs> piece about India, I think is very fascinating too, that you get money and like, yeah, how then that creates a sort of dynamic where disability is seen as such a positive thing to go yeah. after. And it's just like, I think the biggest thing when you're looking at other cultures is you kind of take that lens and you look back at the Western, like American culture mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, wait, there right. is way more than this there is way more than the w- yeah. way i see the world and like how can i expand my perspective to take in the bits and pieces from the rest of the humanity exactly. on this whole world, you know what i mean mm-hmm. and yeah. so i i like that you know and and you'll see that you know we do borrow ideas all the time from around the world uh like with movies sure you, yeah. you see movies television shows boy, do we love ripping off the British. <laughs> but, but, you know, but then they'll, we'll have some of our shows too that they make a British version, like sure. Law and Order. They did that with oh, that did. show too. <laughs> and I was like, this is strange. And then they'll help, because I watched, you know, because now you can watch all these back episodes mm-hmm, and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's showing like the same cases, but it's different because it's in England. Sure, and then sure. you're like, wait, I already watched this episode i know this plot line (laughs) yeah exactly that's funny i always love those kind of things yeah but and with the internet too i'm sure it's going to increase our globalization right like the more we can spread our ideas much faster easier we're going to start to get i maybe a more homogenous culture eventually as like a human society who knows you see this though too like if you go on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Twitter, I've noticed, is like this one social media platform where people from around the world will interact with each other Mm -hmm. in a way that actually is kind of natural, but it's like, but I've noticed the South African Black Twitter and American Black Twitter were all answering and the same question uh-huh. it was there was like what's the biggest lie um you've ever heard out of a man's mouth it was hilarious because you had you know black americans using sure. using vernacular talking about stuff but then also south african black vernacular you know uh-huh. when they're using you know words and things you know that i can understand understand it was like a mixture of english with some uh, little phrases in there Mm -hmm. and but it was hilarious and somebody else pointed it out on the thread they're like i love it with black american twitter and and south african twitter you know get together and mix (laughs) together and get a commentary going it was the commentary and the gifts and but it's funny too because you have like different memes Mm. that are popular like in their society that they're putting up the memes and you know or gifts and memes and then you know the american you know the ones that we're used to seeing as responses Uh you know for like surprise or uh really you know right right. or little clips you Uh know that they show but they're supposed to be funny you know what is funny and commonly known there you know of course is not the same as it is here sure and so 
that was fascinating to me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great example of how like the internet is going to bring together so many different cultures, right? And like, how will I? I wonder what it will look like in the next a hundred years. Like, how our cultures will continue to meld together, and are we just going to be speaking in memes and emojis? <laughs> Maybe. You know <laughs> I what I mean? Like... No. I'm like <laughs> my. Um... I'm one of the old heads. So what does that I, mean? <laughs> what I mean is I met my my first husband, my kid's uh -huh. dad. Yeah. I met him um when match.com was a beta site mm. in 1995. I was in wow. I was in college. I we were we were babies. We got we met and I, I loved it because back then, uh -huh. those days of the web. It was like the wild west. <laughs> and I, the first summer, there were not many women identified people really? who were using the internet like that. Huh. And so. You had your pick. I, I had my pick. <laughs> I was on Match.com and it had hundreds of men and just a few women. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, was, I was in the computer lab. Back I love at, this. At school. <laughs> and I'm so I'm at that time it was like a little map of the world or something. And I clicked on something and I, I clicked on England. And I didn't I even though I've I'm an Anglophile, I've been an Anglophile sure, since sure. childhood. Uh I had an uncle my favorite uncle used to bring me, he owned a bookstore, so he would bring me boxes of books from England. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I just loved England. Sure. And so my um my first husband was British, but I met him online and that's my, my baby daddy, but yeah. that's my kids, my kids dad. And so, uh, but that, I remember when I flew to England mm -hmm. and I went to the passport control mm -hmm. and there was a guy, he's, he was like, okay, your reason for coming, you know, to England. And I was like, well, I'm here to meet my boyfriend. I think he's going to be my, I think he's my boyfriend. Um, I was like, we met online and he goes, I said, we met on the internet and he goes, what's an internet? Oh but God. that was 1996. <gasps> and I, wow. So you flew without ever meeting this person. Yeah, wow. what we did was talk on the phone back in the days when that shit was expensive as hell and they charged by the oh minute. Oh my god, it's yeah, international. Yeah, I had this calling, I had a card and you know, and then I had to pay the phone card off. Like oh my god. every so I got a second job just so I could pay <laughs> the phone bill. It's an expensive romance. Jesus. You know, especially for a college student. Yeah. Hello. Wow. Um, I was just like, so, you know, you know, I had this little part-time job that I worked during sure. the week, yeah. but then on the weekends, then I would also pick up work doing, you know, this uh, weekend job. Nice. nice. And nice. so to pay for the phone bill and wow. for the eventual plane ticket. <laughs> wow. Wow. I hope he was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Got kiddo out of it. And, yeah. You know, and, just, and a whole education about england and you know england is is still a matter for i'll be there this summer for a couple mm -hmm. of months yeah I'll be in cambridge and places yeah. and i can't wait so. yeah 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 that's so crazy to think i can't even imagine getting on a plane to someone i'd never met in person that's like it brings it's up actually all flying i was like i yeah. flew from memphis tennessee um to, yeah because that was the other thing too because people were like and I don't know. You want to talk about being nosy and stuff and looking at... Uh, <laughs> what are you about I, to say? <laughs> I was like, I used to... Uh, I'd also get on there because, like, white supremacists were also getting on there. And so I would I would go on, like, those websites, those early, like, chat rooms. Mm -hmm. And, like, because I used to, like, tell that to BBSs and which uh, bulletin board systems, which is sure, kind of sure. early messaging type, like, stuff. And I would get on there and talk or message on the message board or whatever. And some, they were like, no, you can't be black because black people aren't that intelligent. And I'm talking about the computer uh, and I'm like, and, and I was like, wait, what? No. What I, <laughs> just, and, Jesus. but now you, 
I don't have I don't have patience for that kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> and now I mean, if folks know better, I should hope even racist folks even yeah. they were like, okay, yeah. But oh yeah, so the, going to get on that point, and it's funny we made Jet Magazine and Wall Street Journal <laughs> because when we got married, <laughs> because, because I was in an article. Yeah, I was in a. I, I I have the issue. I say the issue. I have several copies of the issue, but sure, it was sure, Jet sure, Magazine, sure. and it was like Kim Blacks find love on the internet, and it has our wedding picture, Aww. and you know you have this white guy with long brown hair, and my little shiny young uh. little self, you know, right there, and it was funny because I was I was talking. It was there was this documentary. Mm -hmm. this person was doing um on internet dating so they interviewed me mm -hmm. and I was talking about you know this and they're like oh, wow you're an internet dating pioneer and I went I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that might have to be the title of the episode <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you I have you know but now I feel like you know, so, you know, I, you know, we met, married, all that sure, stuff. Sure. And then got to seven, we're married for 17 years, divorce, you know, um, a long and, time. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, got divorced. We're still, for, matter of fact, I am here in his house, his and his wife's, uh, oh, wow. house. He's still close. He got married. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. We're still family. Yeah. You know, wow. I call him my, I call him my husband because he was my husband. I so, love no. husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because ex just sounds so harsh, you yeah. know, because, you know, now some people, you know, I have like boyfriends that are definitely exes, mm -hmm. like ex as in, you know, crisscross, no, <laughs> never again, big old red two lines crossing each other, yeah. but, <laughs> but you know, but we're still family, yeah. you know, his, my, I still consider my mother-in-law, you know, she, mm -hmm. you know, um, she sends me birthday cards and, and, and holiday cards Aww. and she call, you know, and, you know, and, you know, it's the same. It's been, and that's also, mm -hmm. I, I think it's good for my kid too. Of so, course, yeah, of course. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. after 17 years, your family and yeah, you share children together yeah so you know and like i said we were really really young when we got married how, yeah so how young were you 24 and 25 oh, wow yeah i mean i know that I, you know because now i sit there and i'm like i tell my kid i'm like no no wait wait don't do it that young <laughs> not, not that young not that young uh -huh. and I, I was like you're still finding out you're still you're still whatever you're still trying to figure out what it is that but I was like, but you know, but then again, maybe some people, you know, they're ready like that. But you know, but I'm glad. I mean, I'm I'm glad I did that because I'm like, I like the the direction that my life took. Yeah. As a result, because yeah. my world opened up, and so I married. Uh, yeah. You know, I married again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, got divorced, moved. I, I was living south. I lived south basically my whole life. Okay. And then yeah. I moved to California. Oh wow! And, yeah. yeah uh san francisco i okay. was gonna say yeah san nice. francisco and uh i moved in february of like 2016 started dating my now husband in march Aww. and then you know we got married the next year and <laughs> thanks and it's yeah. i cannot believe it's been it'll be five years yeah so exciting this year so yeah he's come here with me to we've come here to atlanta with to your husband yeah with a husband yeah we spent the, you know stay here for you know for the holidays wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i i mean i think that's great right yeah Why not I, especially for the kids right to have that community space i mean i think this is something that should be talked about like what does yeah. it look like when you have a divorce and are still amicable and have well, kids together yeah exactly and so I, I flew because my kid, um, is going to school here because, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, kid was like, cause got a choice. And I was like, it was like, I'm not going to, I don't want to go to school in San Francisco. <laughs> and I was like, fair enough. 
even in because he was like yeah because if I live in Georgia mm-hmm. you know but you know he has his own room and it's a it's cool it's a yes. you know it's nice yes and, whereas in San Francisco yeah that one little at the first the studio apartment and yep, then they have one closet. bedroom yeah yeah <laughs> and we're just like yeah you we made this part of the living room this is your, your, yeah. your room. so yeah. whenever you know he came to visit he has but now he has his own room when he mm. comes mm-hmm. you know stuff mm-hmm. so and I have fingers crossed that maybe college he he wants California yeah I mean hey warmer weather it's great and beautiful out there so do you have one kid or, or multiple? One, okay. I have one um, and my husband and I are wanting to adopt from the foster oh, care system. Exciting. So, but that's, that's all, it's a lot of work, a I lot of classes, paperwork, especially if you're wanting to adopt somebody in another state, then that's even more huh, yeah. uh, hurdles. But there's one particular child I have in mind that I would really, I think would be a really great fit for mm. to complete family but um I shall see I'm hoping because I was like okay we have we're blessed to have resources mm-hmm. to where we can have another person family and also I just I I love being a mom oh yeah and I, I was like I've got a lot of love and I want to yeah. love an, another kid and oh. I want I want to share that love you know yeah. and also you know, my kid also would like a Mm -hmm. sibling. Mm -hmm. So, well, I will be setting you up and all good energy. I hope that that works out and I hope that it will come together. And I mean, yeah, to grow your family in that way would be so beautiful and yeah, take on, go ahead. I'm like going, it'll, but I know it'll happen at some point because I'm, I don't know. I, I've, I've learned and like, like, you know, people talk about manifestation or whatever, but I, pretty powerful at manifesting yeah tell me about um that. because it comes from that you know even though sometimes you know people tell me no all the time I have heard no non-stop like mm. even having my kid I was told no really? because oh oh yeah okay I have a my spinal cord injury comes from having a rare birth defect mm. that was found deep in found inside of my spinal cord okay it just doesn't happen if you look it up you know spinal avm it's on those rare disorders and there's not much known about them Mm. because they're that rare Mm. it took a while actually to diagnose what was Mm. going on with me because like my legs and stuff were going out from under me and my arms stopped working and i stopped being able to feel all over my body and so i underwent it felt like tons of MRIs, CAT scans, so all much. that stuff, yeah. x-rays. And it was a cervical MRI that a nurse practitioner ordered uh, who said, you know what, let's check this out. And it matter of fact, so when the films came back and they called me in the office and the head of that neuro, neurologist uh, office looked at it and he said, you know, I've read that this can happen, but I've never seen it. And this dude got his medical degree the year before I was born. And I was not what you want to hear. I was like, no. So my, um, my kid's dad, um, and I had some, as I called it some, I'm sorry, you're dying sex. And, uh, then because it was killing me, I was basically having an aneurysm inside of my spinal cord because the ABM was starting to bleed. So I, so I had some, I had experimental surgery at, um, Emory university. It was planned. It took them a while to plan it out. I call them, uh, from Vegas because I was like well I want to see Vegas before I die because I had never been I because I find out <laughs> when we the day before we flew to Vegas that I was pregnant oh my god uh, and so I called them and I said oh guess what I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. And, yeah and then they were like no no you oh. can't be pregnant no 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 you know this surgery we don't we are not the, as you know sure of the outcomes i was given a 60 percent chance of dying 40 percent chance Robin. of living whoa 
And so then I, I know it sounds like this big, and it, it was because they were just like, wow. And I was like, no, I'm going to go ahead and, and stay pregnant. Fuck I, yeah. I was, yeah. I was like, nah, I, 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 I would, know what I, I'm, doing. I'm like, I get it. And they had so much pressure, really? and, you know, from both the OBGYN and from the doctor, they had one doctor on the team who was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I can help, you know, I can ethically, you know, be a part of, you know, doing this surgery because, you know, it could blah, blah, blah you know, because, you know, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. pregnancy. Sure. And I was like, but baby, because I had always wanted to be Oh, yeah. You uh, wanted to be a mom. I, I wanted to be a mom always. Hmm. And and we had not gotten pregnant in the past, you wow. know, so. What cosmic it, timing. Wow. I'm like, wow. telling you. That's what I think. Seriously, I think that my kid was sent, you know, somehow to let me, it was my, to me, it was my sign from the universe that things were going to be, they were going to work out. Mm. That, you know, that this was meant to be that I, that, you know, basically I was going to be okay whatever happened that life was going to be yeah you know life was going to be here so because because I was of almost of the mind of eh, if, if it's killing me I might as well die yeah, you know I have to go see but, Vegas. yeah I have to go to Vegas and then and so yeah they I had uh started out with two surgeries and then um, it got infected. And so then oh. I had to have another surgery to remove the infected tissue and to oh take out the titanium rod that was in there and sew up my muscles and stuff above like where they had cut to cut the thing out of as my, as the doctor put it, the neurosurgeon put it, he goes, yes, I, we fillet, he goes, I filleted your spinal cord. They filleted my spinal cord to remove the rogue blood vessels. Whoa. Yes. And pregnant. Wow. Pregnant. Oh yeah. Strong. And so strong. Yeah. Strong. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so kiddo was there. Kiddo and everybody's like, they didn't expect the pre- me to actually be able to continue being pregnant, but I wow. did rehab pregnant. I had the worst. I had hypermesis gravidorum, the same thing like wow. that Princess Kate had, okay. and where you just throw up your whole pregnancy oh my god robin i i lost 70 pounds oh my god uh, yeah. I, I know i was i Whoa. was yeah it's a that's a whole story wow that is a whole story and so you know and there was so much in between there i can talk about but i'm trying to write a uh, memoir about that yeah because it's a you know i still have not found enough there's not been another person in the world that has had that surgery wow. and been pregnant and all of that there's yeah. that that hasn't happened i'm still and so i'm wanting to write about that you should yeah. but i'm trying you know i have bought all these books and stuff about writing a memoir and stuff that i'm like going okay i now have a schedule and i am going to write this book this yes, year you but, are uh, yes so yes so um <laughs> But yeah, and so Kai came here. He he, Kai. he arrived. Yeah, he he came here. Th- I thirty. He made it thirty five weeks. Nice. And then preeclampsia came along. I had thank you March of Dimes for those little pamphlets that you give women or have in the doctor's offices because reading that pamphlet is how I recognized that I had that. You know, they say it's like your worst headache you've ever had in your life. Really? And and I have migraines. And this one was like, it was all of a sudden I was like, this is the weirdest migraine. This one's intense. Took migraine medicine and it wasn't going away. Oh, God. And then I was like, oh, oh. Pamphlet. <laughs> I wonder if it's like this preeclampsia. And I went in there and my blood pressure was it was like, I didn't even know your blood pressure could get to like 200 and something over. I thought that was like death, mm. but it was really super Whoa. high. So they were like, no, baby has to come out now. Wow. And so I had a C-section under general anesthesia. So I went to sleep. I woke up. I had a baby. Wow. And... Yes. 
yes. And, <laughs> and, and he's do, now 17. And does he know how much of a warrior you are to have had him? I, I know, I guess for him, this is just all natural because, oh, <laughs> because he doesn't know anything else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it was a journey, you know, it was, you know, cause trying to navigate being a mom and becoming disabled, you know, wow. at the same time yeah, was quite the emotional mental struggle mm. um in the beginning mm. it took therapy a yeah. lot of therapy yeah. but also finding disability community mm. and finding disability community is really what helped turn my life around mm. and disability advocacy yeah. and then going into that and you know and then formulating my career because like you know, having to experience getting that firsthand experience with attitudes towards disability and pregnancy and disability and parenting. Yeah. And it, it was all, it was like trial by fire, or like learning about yeah. it. So that, that, that was actually what launched my career was my experience. Yeah. And so, and what a powerful experience it is that, yeah, people looked at you and said, Robin, you can't do this. Yeah. Like, don't tell me I can't do shit. I will do it. Mm. And you it's did. It. 17 so. years later. Yeah. Here. Yeah. He's, he graduates high school next year. <laughs> I, no, I know. Because I can still, you know, I'm sitting here talking about this and I can still remember what he looked like the first oh, time like, I looked at him yeah. and, and I said very loudly, it was a recovery room basically. And there was like a couple, there was another couple in there that yeah. also was there with their baby. And I was like, this is a white baby. This is not <laughs> my baby. And my husband's like, shh, shh, shh. Robin, Robin, <laughs> but that's because of the drugs and yeah. stuff too. And because I, I was just like, because also, you know, and that's another thing one can talk about is sure. culturally when you, you know, you've envisioned or, you know, you have this idea of what your child is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my head, my child was going to be brown. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I was like, some shade of brown. Right. I was not expecting that. And I remember even as a doctor, I was just like, they're like, oh, well, you know, you know, usually, you know, babies that with African-American heritage or whatever, that they'll start getting darker, you know, as the days go by, they're like, you can look at their ears or something. And I was like, the ears are the same color as the rest <laughs> of this baby. And you sure, this is mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just like, and then also then when he opened his eyes and his eyes are blue and I was like, what oh, yeah so british side yeah yeah it turns out i also have you know it's because 23 and me was quite the revelation oh, so wow. yeah i i carry a recessive detail i'm part british i'm part yeah <laughs> that's where the oh, love yeah. came from you didn't yeah, even yeah, know I was, I was like it's such a powerful story i i can't even imagine all of the things that you were going through when you were having that pregnancy and and you you said having your disability come out at that time so was this not yeah yeah, it wasn't, um, because before then, you know, I didn't have a spinal cord injury. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't, I mean, yes, I had the birth defect in my spinal cord, but I didn't know it was there. It hadn't manifested at that point. Wow. It hadn't, you know, it hadn't started showing signs. And what I had dealt with before, you know, as far as disability was mental health. Sure. You know, because I had depression and anxiety mm, and mm. PTSD from past trauma and abuse. Yeah. So, and mm. also I have ADHD. Mm. And so I need those things, yeah. you know, but it, I didn't get the physical disability until, you know, until my pregnancy, you know, because wow. I had to have the surgery. So, because I had both the surgery and the pregnancy going on, you know, at the wow. same time and the rehab. So, yeah, like I said, I did, you know, rehabilitation. Um, I was in a rehabilitation hospital in my first and second trimester. Mm. But by the time my third trimester, you know, because you can't, like, be not supposed to be on your back 
and stuff like that. So I couldn't do really participate in a lot of the exercises and stuff like that. Sure. So I got, so I was discharged mm. and learning how to make adaptations, how to do things. Yeah. It was a hard education because mm. especially when I didn't have, I didn't have anybody around me or in my life mm. that could help me navigate that. Wow. And so, you know, I, I look back now, now I can sit there and say, I'm very grateful that my kid's grandmother, my, my mother-in-law, I'm yeah. glad that Nana, Nana came over and, you know, stayed those first three months of my kid's life. Now at the time I was not, cause I was <laughs> like, this is a long ass time, yeah, you know, but yeah. you know, but now I look back and I'm like, Ooh, there, Thank we God. wouldn't have made yeah, it. Yeah. And, you know, she helped take, you know, cause I was still having to go, even though I wasn't in a hospital, I was still having to go week, you know, every week I was at some kind of an appointment. Yeah. Wow. But it's just, you know, but it was an education and learning about people's attitudes towards disability mm -hmm. about, uh, but also towards me being black wow. and mm. disabled mm. and pregnant. Mm. I had an old white doctor when I had, I was getting admitted, uh, to, um, a rehabilitation hospital. Uh-huh. And he happened to be the doctor that was there on call that, that evening. Cause yeah. I came in later on a weekend and he kind of looked at, he looked at me, looked at me kind of up and down with this look of kind of disgust on his face. <sighs> and he was like, cause you know, by then I'm starting a show and I guess he goes, um, if you knew you were going to be like that, talking about disabled, he goes, why don't you take birth control or something? <gasps> yeah oh my god yeah yeah so that it taught me god. the fact you know because how dare yeah this person think that he had not only the right but that was his performance he thought that that was his professional opinion mm -mm. that he he was in that he was able to give his bigoted opinion about my body and about my reproductive health choices um but in particular based on like my, my body so oh, i Robin, was, god i would have slapped that oh i know but he, <laughs> I at been that like point, you mean I, I was like at my lowest ebb physically <sighs> Because, you know, I had had those at that, you know, by that point, three surgeries, Yeah, you know, that were in, you know, my back and spinal cord. Right. So I, and I was on intravenous antibiotics. Yeah. I, like, fighting. I, I was fighting. Like I had so thrush, much. Fresh. I, do you know you can get yes. fresh? Yes. I did not. I learned that. Yeah. And yeah. And I got the yeast infection from hell. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so, and with spinal cord injury, which meant I didn't really feel it until it got so bad mm. that it was bleeding. And so then I was just like, yeah, that's when I was talking about the reproductive health care and disability. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, learning about things like that, like, how do you, you know, how do you, how can you tell if you have a yeast infection or whatever, mm. if you're not feeling itching, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, I know you're going to have to put all the trigger warnings on this episode. Anyway, <laughs> but, I'm about it. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's that sort of thing. Like how the education that, you know, because doctors don't even get, they don't get that kind mm. of education that I found out that the medical profession actually does not get a whole lot of sexual health education in the first place, but yeah. especially any specialized uh, sexual health education around disability. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. so, so that's why I actually, I really like it when I, you know, I get jobs where I'm being, where I'm asked to speak or to educate 
medical providers yeah or, they need uh, it. Other, yeah clearly and that yeah and you met needs it yes he's still alive yes. let's find him <sighs> he's probably to be honest i mean he was he probably was like in his mid 60s at that time oh. so he's probably retired mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'd like to think so he needs to be retired still it just needs the education i know <laughs> yeah. yeah but it was just but it was you know but you know just you know is that also that like that whole intersection this you know yeah, this the different identities older, yes white southern you know doctor male and just but also you know i'm just thinking it was his tone his look yeah. everything and and i could go on with some other stories but i won't because we you know we're, we're now at i know we're we're past time but no i yeah. mean <laughs> i mean these are all such important stories i think that show one your strength i'm just like in over here in just absolute awe of so much of the bullshit that you've had to go through and fight through and to yeah now your voice is so powerful because you've lived this experience to know it mm -hmm. yeah i like foraging paths mm -hmm. you know but you know because sometimes you have to you know you gotta make a way even if people tell you that that's not the way to be made yes so. yes and that is brave and that is bold it can also sometimes be exhausting and yes. also lonely yes because but but what makes it not so lonely and not so exhausting is when you know thank goodness i have good people in my life mm -hmm. having community yeah. i think is key and integral and important to surviving anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you know and i i sit there and i'm like if it wasn't for my kid's father you know if it wasn't for my husband you know you know because i i had to have times basically i was like yeah at the time i didn't know what as called white privilege but i mm. you know but now yeah. I, i'm yeah, like yeah. Well, yeah yeah you know i was just like look we need to use you have to be there or you have we need to use you because people talk to you differently and then treat you differently uh. than they do me so basically you know that's you know learning about like allyship mm. and mm -hmm. support and what that can look like yeah and Th that whole process taught me too about the power of like economics mm. and we had health insurance and thank goodness we had health insurance Makes it and we had good yeah. health insurance mm -hmm. and because my because he had a good job that I said like that white British privilege is something else because yeah. I was like white people in America I was like they just hear that English accent and all of a sudden I was like it doesn't matter where you come from and I remember like my yeah. cousins when I brought him home <laughs> to Arkansas yeah like, oh wow <laughs> and, and I remember my cousin I remember they would ask him like are you a prince you have a castle <laughs> you know? the accent it does yeah, because they're like England. They're like they knew England, <laughs> and he's like, no, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> just your basic British dude. <laughs> yeah, just basic. And our, we went into oh, it's hilarious. And we went like when we went into the um, into the licensing office, and because mm -hmm. we got married in Little Rock, Arkansas, because that's yeah. where I, I um, grew up, and we went into there and as we're getting the license and he's talking and some of his other groomsmen are talking and the lady is sitting there she goes where are they from i was like they're england and she goes well you need to teach them how to talk and speak <laughs> english she, she said because we're an american now and i was like um they all went to cambridge university these are like yeah they're english and they are speaking they're oh oh what that's I hilarious just, yeah, yeah 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 they need to learn how to speak english yeah it's like <laughs> lady that makes no sense but sure 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 <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you did have him at that time in your life because I can't even imagine that 
horrible doctor that looked at you if your husband or your husband right wasn't there with you at that time how much worse could it have been how much worse could it have been yeah we were both like just in shock like to the fact that he didn't know what to say and because he was like wow and i'm i'm just like like i've had enough of this bullshit (laughs) but you know i am i feel really blessed Mm. you know that i'm here now and fighting and i'm like i'm i've come a bit of being able to use you know that that whole experience you know help launch you know a different career and a different path for me absolutely and one that i feel i actually feel like i can make a contribution to society Mm. in a different way yes and you know, maybe help someone else be able to have a better experience in navigating, you know, things that have to do with, you know, healthcare or sexuality or any of those things. Yeah. And you are, because you have lived that experience, you know, what it's like, you know, the frustrations and you, you have the wisdom having had this whole journey. And so, yes, I'm confident that even in this podcast and the other dynamics that you're showing up in the world, that you have to be connecting with other people that resonate with your voice and your experience and finding you the community that you were exactly talking about needing. It's that community that allows us to heal. And so, my God, I hope Kai sees what an amazing, strong mother he has. Yeah. I, I don't know. He probably thinks right now he's just like he. I know he's he loves mom. me. He's just yeah, it's just mom. And it's but he's also he, young. It will happen. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's he's like he's the best. He's my heart. Yeah. Love that kid so special, hard. Special gift. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, I know. I know. I want to be conscious of our time too. Is there anything that you feel like you're like, wow, I really didn't hit on this today, but I wanted to say this before coming into the podcast? No, because I actually, I had no idea what we were going to talk about. I so it that way. I, do. I really <laughs> okay. do. I really do. <laughs> okay. Well then I'll come to the closing question. Okay. So I ask everyone on the podcast, what is one thing that you wish other people knew was more normal? No one has all of the answers. And also I wish that people realize that there's no such thing as perfection Mm -hmm. and there's no, no one has a perfect life. Mm -hmm. And it's taken me a while Mm -hmm. to learn that lesson to not uphold other, what I view from the outside as, okay, that is a perfect relationship or that is a perfect household or that's the way it's supposed to be what is normal <laughs> yeah. amen amen yep. yeah yep, yep yep question the question that's all so yeah, great answer, yeah exactly right? i feel like that something that i wish was more normal is is realizing that there is there really isn't a norm mm-hmm. and we're all figuring this out we're mm-hmm. all figuring out life as it comes mm-hmm. you know we can draw inspiration from others and we can have you know guidance or whatever but ultimately you know you you figure these things out and define it for yourself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and even what you were talking about earlier the different cultural contexts right i mean what is a meaningful life well that's gonna depend on so many different factors your culture other identities what you want to do with it i mean there is exactly one size fits all model for what it means to be normal or live a happy life or any of that stuff so i love that you're hitting on that like you really should be challenging that question and and let go of the models that we're trying to fit ourselves we're like circles yeah, trying we're, to fit into a square peg we're like oh we were all and you're like going okay do, or people are like okay do i need to soften my edges in order to feel no, in no the, no um, do not soften the edges Sweet. no just yeah. be you exactly and, and you know you'll make a way and to believe in yourself i wish that it was more normal that we were taught to trust in our abilities and to trust in ourselves more than what we do i'm Uh i'm not saying like being self-centered and thinking that everything you do is right i'm just saying that 
to be able to trust your gut and to be able Mm -hmm. to trust that, you know, trust in your decisions and trust in, you know, that sort of thing. Exactly. Because only you know what's best for you and only you know what you're capable of. Exactly. And so, yeah, that's what I, I mean, that's, that's how I had Kai. I had to learn to try. I trusted myself. And that's how you have the career that you have now, right? Speaking and building this community. And how I got my house. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's Hell a yeah. whole different story. But yeah, because I was also told, no, no, oh. you're not going to get that house. Yeah. I am so in awe of all of the no's that you had defied in your own strength and your own bravery. Just, yeah, thank you for all of the work that you are doing to make this world a better place. If you enjoyed today's episode, then leave us a five-star review wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you're a part of the Anarchist community, then follow us on Instagram or nominate a guest for the show by sending in a letter to modernanarchypodcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.